Count Distinct is a whole different ball game. It's pretty common in most of the Oracle documentation or whenever an Oracle speaker is talking at a conference or they're doing a blog that they say, in whatever sphere of the Oracle database you're using, they say, try stick with the defaults. And as a DBA or a developer, you go, ah, oh, yeah, that's for noobs. You know, I, I know so much more than that. I know how to particular choose parameters or options or storage clauses, etc. that, you know, I can always manipulate things because the defaults are just for the, you know, for the people that don't really know what they're doing. And sometimes I'll agree that is indeed the case. But there's one particular case when it comes to optimizer stats, where if you're not using the defaults, you are in for a world of pain. Now, I wanna stress that a lot of the stuff you'll see here is not stuff you can really control anyway, but it will lead to a understanding that using certain non-default options in DBMS stats is gonna cause you a world of grief. What does DBMS stats do when we need to gather stats on a table? Well, it's gonna populate those dictionary columns that contain the information that the optimizer needs. And a lot of that stuff is exposed to us as DBAs and developers. If I look at DBA tables for a given table, one of the key things we collect is, for example, the number of rows in the table. If I look at DBA tab columns, then for each column of each table, I need to gather things like what's the lowest value, what's the highest value, what's the number of distinct values. Now there's plenty of other stats as well we collect along the way, but let's just focus on those ones because this is critical to why you need to go with the defaults for certain operations in DBMS stats. Let's look at a candidate table for what we're going to gather stats on. I've got a table of person here, I've got a person ID, and just a few columns, the gender, name, etc. I'm gonna turn on a trace because DBMS stats just runs SQL queries in order to work out this information. So I'm gonna turn on a SQL trace and then gather table stats and see what queries were run. Putting aside all the hints and various things, and if you're running stats in parallel, you'll see all sorts of other stuff going on as well. We can pretty much narrow down the description of getting column stats as we need a count of the number of values because some columns might contain a null. We need the min and we need the max and we need the distinct number of values. So let's just focus on those four aggregations. To count a column is easy. You simply go once through the table and every time you hit a value, you add one to your counter. To find the minimum and the maximum of a value is also just one pass through the table because every time I hit a value that's lower than my existing one I'm looking at, then that changes the min. Every time I hit a value that's higher than the one I've currently got in my memory, that changes the max. So all I have to do is remember what I've currently seen and work my way through the table. So count, min, and max, I simply scan top to bottom through all the table values and I get my results. Count distinct is a whole different ball game. You know, if someone says to you, find me all the distinct names in your contacts list or find me all the distinct names in the telephone book if you're of my generation. That's a non-trivial exercise and typically it involves a lot of work to deduplicate the data to get the distinct list. We can simulate that with a couple of queries. If I do a count star on the people table, it took about 43 seconds on this old laptop. It's not the fastest thing in the world. If I do a count distinct of the gender column, then it took significantly longer. Now, I wanna stress I've turned off some optimizations that the database normally does here to demonstrate that if I have to do the, the old school way of sorting all this data, then it takes a long time. And that brings me to why you need to use the defaults on DBMS stats. One of the things DBAs love to do is choose what they think is the best percent size. If I've got a small table, I'll do a compute stats. If I've got a large table, I'll use an estimate percentage, this being a hangover from the days when we used to use analyze. Here, I'm using an estimate percent of 25, and on this poor little laptop, it actually couldn't even finish. I actually got an error that I ran out of temporary table space. Now, if you want to avoid those kind of errors, or if you're not getting errors, avoid your temporary table space getting absolutely flogged while you're gathering stats, you simply need to set the estimate percent to the default. If you do that, we use a new mechanism to get the distinct number of values for a column. And we don't have to sort any data, we don't have to do any 
hard work, we can do it with the same single path through the data like we were doing for count, min, and max. Now the question is, putting aside computing, if I gave you a list of objects and said find the count of distinct values, how do you do it just with a single pass without rearranging the data and sorting it, etc.? We achieve this by using a hashing function. And a little bit of visualization here. Let's say I've got a group of colors that I want to find the distinct values for. What I'll do is I'll simply grab the first color, put it through this hashing function, which gives me a numeric result, and I store that result. I get the next color, put it through the hashing function, I get maybe a different result. But every time I put each different color through a hashing function, I get a different result. And at the end of it, having one pass through all the different colors, I simply look at what hash functions have been ticked and I get a number of distinct values equals nine. Now that seems a lot of smoke and mirrors and just hand waving to sort of say, yes, that's all going to work. And the internals are far more complicated than just throwing things through a hash function. But if you search for things like hyperlog algorithms and things like that, you can see that there are mathematical constructs out there that let you get a very good approximation to distinct values just by scanning one pass through the data. But here's the key. You only get access to those algorithms if you leave the estimate percent as automatic or the default. If you do estimate of one or 10 or 25 or anything that is not the default, then we resort to simply doing a count distinct and you don't get that benefit. So this is that one time, and one of many times I might add, that generally go with the defaults on the Oracle database if you can. If something forces you to move away from them, then so be it. But in this particular example, with estimate percent, it is critical that you go with the defaults to get the best performance from DBMS GatherStats.